Hey, good morning everybody. Mike Coppage here. I just picked up my daily advertiser. Went out there for the third time and uh, I'm glad it was there because it's pretty cold out there. And on the uh, front page uh, section there was a headline that said there were going to be charges in uh, teens deaths and at first uh, I was under the uh, assumption that there may be some kind of charge, different charge in the case where the uh, young man who I believe was an Acadian graduate, a uh, Cajun student, you know, he had shot and I believe killed another young man and then also uh, two other uh, targets or victims. I, it's been a while since I uh, read up on the case but the really interesting thing about it is as I understand it the two young men who uh, did not were not deceased were uh, the, the received uh, you know, bullets fired at them were the St. Thomas War quarterback William Bellamy uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing his name right and Charlie's Catholic quarterback Cole Kelly who I had the privilege of interviewing earlier this year. Uh, I wanted to interview Will uh, but stopped working with rivals before that. Um, you know Cole Kelly is really really uh, under the radar right now and when I say that it's because he's not your normal six foot seven quarterback. The guy can score 30 points in a hoops game and the first time that I wanted to interview him I was at the Nike Spark competition and I ran into uh, uh, one of Turling's players uh, Gavin Royer really underrated uh, hard hitting safety linebacker hybrid and I said look hey uh, if uh, Cole Kelly is interested in doing in any interviews I would really really uh, enjoy doing that and uh, he said well uh, he's really not into that with football. He's a basketball guy. But then at some point I believe he changed his mind and uh, is interested in both. But uh, you know St. Thomas More is uh, always a contender for the state championship with the large schools. Um, and it's amazing how coach, uh, I believe it's coach Danny Broussard, it's amazing how he does it. I've been watching him do it for years. It's the sunkest uh, shootout and uh, other venues. I mean, he never has the talent. I mean, he had Brad Boyd and he's had some of the Moutons and stuff, Monclos, but uh, I mean, he, he never has the talent, though, to match up head to head with some of the teams that he beats. And so, uh, just want to give him, him a shout out. Uh, I was looking at. Uh, I didn't find a box score for any Charlie's Catholic games in the paper today. I was uh, looking at uh, the results from the All-Star game that were in Lafayette the other day. I believe that uh, Hunter Register, who the wide receiver slash safety for Como, who I'm so high on, I believe he played in it. I didn't see any stats. Uh, he probably was concerned if he did play in it. I expect he was concerned about his basketball team because I mean he this is his year to lead a team he's the senior uh, in the past his brother uh, Hayward Register has uh, had his year leading the team and uh, they have a very interesting squad they rely heavily on defense um, which is something that you see STM do at times I'm not a basketball expert but I do like to follow up when I get the time. But Como this year, uh, they're really trying to shut foes down. And uh, Hunter Register is scoring uh, like 50% 50, 50 of uh, his team's output at, at times. And I know Como's trying to hold teams to like 38 points and such. They've been like the number five or four seed at times. Uh, he's a three star on Scout last time I looked. Unrated on 247, unrated on Rivals last time I looked. Uh, I had a, a very heated argument with Demetri Warren. Um, he didn't feel that Hunter 
a couple years ago was athletic enough. I feel that the guy is extremely athletic. He just doesn't get utilized in his in his offense and defense um, just to where he can showcase his skills on the football field. And uh, I'm sorry to call you out, Demetri, but that's the size that we picked. Uh, but uh, anyway, that's about it for today. I was interested. Uh, I saw that, that Tiger Besh, uh, and I may not be pronouncing his name right, I saw that he was the, uh, I believe he was the leading receiver, at least from Louisiana, in that all-star game in Lafayette. Uh, I believe that was the Max, maybe the Max and Finger game. And uh, I remember there's another guy from Plaquemine, I believe, who puts on some kind of all-star game. And he got in a fight with, I believe, the athletic director or the an older man at LSU camp. And, of course, people automatically were saying it was Mr. Clean. It was not me. I did meet the guy, though, at the NUC Five Star. He seems pretty crazy like me, but a, a nice guy. Um, also, this weekend, there is the... Uh, there's a, a, a tournament, or not a tournament, but there's an all-star game, football game uh, in, La in uh, Lake Charles. It's going to pit the uh, Southwest Louisiana All-Stars versus, uh, I guess, the Southeast Texas All-Stars. And I was hoping to make it to that, but it looks like I'm not going to be able to make it to that. I saw that Marcus Lemoyne from Elton will be playing in that, and I'm looking forward to hearing about his results. But uh, that's your uh, morning uh, news recap. Not a whole lot yet, but there will be a lot more again. You know, don't feel obligated to watch, <laughs> to watch uh, each video. And uh, I, I know you're not because I know that a lot of them just get a couple of uh, minutes of airtime, but that's definitely fine. I want to put on, I just want to put on some stuff on here that. Uh, uh, it may interest some of you. One final thing. One thing that really uh, jumped out at me was when I saw that East Boulevard played Hainesville 14 to nothing uh, deep in the playoffs. And Gordy Glazer, who's uh, uh, a long time ago, I believe that he was related to uh, uh, the coach who uh, had taken. East Forward against Newman deep in the playoffs. And that was the best team East Forward ever had in the football field back then that I, w I was aware of. Um, they lost to Newman, but they had uh, Bo Maggio, they were coached by uh, Mike Maggio, they had a Mike Maggio at quarterback. But it was very uh, intriguing to see that G Gordy Glazer was a coach this year. He was, they went 9 and 3, played Hainesville 14 to nothing. I saw they played Elton last night, so I asked uh, Marcus Lemoyne's mother. I said, uh, "How was how was East Boulevard?" Uh, I said, "Well, they they kind of like gritty, you know, not that fast, not that big, just uh, you know, hard nosed team." And uh, she said, that "Gordy Glazer after the game came over, shook her her son's hand and prayed uh, with both teams with with both teams." which is something that no other coach had done before. So I think that's a good thing, good way to lead out the morning. So uh, I will get back with you guys later on. Take care. Peace. I'm out.